Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, point number two. Now, all the points that I'm going to make are going to be based on the fact that there will be very few people saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Very few people that are still alive and saved. Based on Matthew 24, verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God allowed things to play out the way that they are going, there would come a point to where nobody would be saved. So my point number two is going to be based on the fact that there will be people deceived greater on the last day than ever before in the history of mankind. Now, consider this. When Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The very first thing that he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. I don't take that lightly. That's a big deal. That's the very first thing that he says. And he warns us over and over about deceivers. False prophets shall arise and deceive many all right and then again false Christ false prophets great signs and wonders they shall deceive the very elect so we live in a world full of deceivers And to go along with that, in Matthew 7, we read, Beware of false prophets. Now you think about that. All these examples I just gave you, Reverend Smitty, yesterday when you went to church, how often did he warn you of deceivers? I'm just asking. False prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. In other words, they look just like the sheep. They look just like saved people. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Now, does that mean you'll know if they're saved? Nope. Does that mean you'll know if they're not saved? Yep. That's what it's talking about. Not everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The will of the Father is that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's the will of the Father. Now, think about this. Many will say to me in that day, the day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not taught from the Bible in the ways of God and the things of God in the name of Jesus Christ? Have we not done that? And in thy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, have we not cast out devils? Have we not helped people in the name of Jesus Christ overcome their drug and alcohol addictions and help in the name of Jesus Christ those that have marriage problems and mental problems, those sorts of things? And in the name of Jesus Christ, have we not 
done many wonderful works. Have we not set up these food banks to help feed the poor and clothe the poor? And have we not went out to the community and mowed yards and fixed houses and garages and done many wonderful works in the name of Jesus Christ? Then will I, Jesus, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Why does he say that? Very obviously, very clearly. This is easy to see. The reason is because they do not trust in the work that was done for them, rather, they trust in the work that they do. In other words, they don't believe in Jesus at all. They say they do. They think that they're going to get saved by their good works. They think they're good people. They do more good than bad. And they deserve heaven. And they don't deserve it at all. In fact, as none of us none of us do, and it's only by the grace of God that anybody gets saved. We are 100% at the mercy of God. 100%. Go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. 